Now this is quite relevant to what you're doing in your rugby. It'd be a sprint effort, little break, very similar to playing number eight, coming out of the scrum, hitting it, then getting back in the scrum. In the middle of this bench, he's going to go flat out. Ah! Ah! So see how he went high and cut down, and then he just goes out a little bit in the straights and then cuts down again. Go on, up, 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 up! Dave did it in 9.6 seconds. 9.6 seconds. You ready? Keep those arms relaxed, though. I had to put everything I'd just learned into practice whilst going as fast as I possibly could. One wrong move would have meant disaster. I had to concentrate, stay calm and fly. And no fire. That's a good time for a first lap. Well done, Jake! It was just such a good feeling. When everybody started clapping for me, I was like, yes. Oh, daddy. Uh, you didn't beat Dave, unfortunately. 10.95 <laughs> seconds. That's all right, isn't it? So Dave was nearly a second and a half quicker. So there's two types of people in sport, those that can and those that can't. Uh, and I put Jake down to the, those that can. One second off previous world champions, an incredible feeling, and it makes me more than confident that I can get what I want and I can make it with my own will, motivation and determination. My final fitness training involved trying another Olympic sport, gymnastics, which, believe it or not, is an essential part of all pro rugby players' training. I'm a strength and conditioning coach. I look after lots of the England rugby team, like James Haskell, some other big boys like that. Um, today, we're going to be using some of this kit for gymnastics-based workout to look at your strength flexibility, mobility, yeah. all the stuff needed to get to the top level of the game. Up, no, up, up, no. There's a lot of pressure on rugby players these days. Because, you know, people think, oh, you've got to be big um, and they have to carry a fair amount of muscle, but you've got to be able to move your frame around. So we're going to move on to a strength-based circuit now. We've got a helper in for this, Hamish Carter, who's Olympic hopeful 2016. Hamish was just unreal, just, he was like a little ball of muscle and just killing it. And then seeing him do the flips and stuff it just made me jealous. I knew I was going to get shown up by like a 13 and a half year old today. I just knew it. Over to you Hamish, let's muscle up please. Boom, there it is, there's a muscle up. You're talking about power, strength, control. So Hamish made that look very easy. You're going to be uh, keen for a bit of that? This is about the size of my leg. I'm never going to be able to do that. That's unbelievable. Hamish is only six stone, so I think roughly I'm three times his weight. So this is tough for you. You're carrying a few extra pounds at the moment. We need to get that leaned up. Then all this kind of body weight stuff would be easier. Hands down, nice big extension. Let's get on up. Up. Good. Come on, a couple more, couple more. Happy days. Easy peasy. All the exercises I can see are so relevant to rugby because even in a rugby match, all the same muscles are burning. You need strength and power throughout the entire game. Four, excellent. Another one like that. And drop off, drop off, drop off. After pushing my fitness training to the limit, Brownlee asked me to meet him for a night out. They were doing Zumba dancing. <laughs> it's all about the hips, you know. That's all about coordination. <laughs> what happened to relaxing then, eh? Oh, come I on, thought you were buying me dinner. Look at this, all, all beautiful <laughs> girls around here. I'd definitely say the most enjoyable thing about the Zimmer was maybe the company. That was pretty good. Push it back. Side. One more. I think Braulio um, has natural rhythm, definitely, because you can see he's got the, the hips going on there. Um, and Jake, he really put all of his effort into it. He really gave it a go. I really wasn't sure how this would help me on the rugby pitch, but Braulio's terrible Brazilian moves certainly helped me unwind. He needs a little bit of Brazilian swagger for sure. <laughs> That's the last one. The next day, Braulio felt I was ready to do a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu session with him at his academy in Birmingham. Hey man, good to see you. Welcome oh. to my home. 
Now you're ready to start some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Ready? Four, five. I was doing a session with one of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu teams in the country. Okay. Backwards. Every fight that I do yeah. is a battle. Yeah. Every battle has its rules, you know? But the most important thing is this, the warrior spirit that you gotta have. Braulio explained the aim of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to get your opponent to submit by tapping. Three taps, finish, that's it. After a crash course in some of the key techniques, I learned Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was all about getting your opponent into a stress position they couldn't get out of. Nice, perfect. He has changed a lot. Now, he starts listening much more. I'm very happy that this will be a very good lesson for his life. Then, it was time for my first fight, and Braulio had put me up against a black belt master. But I'd taken down bigger guys on the rugby pitch, so I thought I had a chance. Since we shake hands, I go really nice and easy. I didn't expect that he's, he has so much power, so when he grabbed the goal, I go, Whoa. He grabbed me, he almost took me down. I was judging a book by his cover, just as Bradley said, and I was going for it a little bit, threw him to the floor a little bit. I felt good about that, and then all of a sudden he just put me down. <laughs> this was a very good lesson for rugby. Technique can win over size. In Jiu-Jitsu, a small person, he can pick the big one. So, you know, even if you're big, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, you know. <laughs> this was the moment we had both been waiting for. I finally got to play my coach at his own game. I finally got my chance to have a go at Bradio. I knew what was coming. I just had a little bit of hope that I might be able to just do something. That was never going to happen. He was in control the whole time. Jake is a very competitive person. Like he's big, he's strong. You know, it was very good to, to put him in his place and, and, and show him that this is not as simple as, as it looks, you know? Anything in life is, is like that. It's all about persistence, training, you know, and drills and strategy. Wow. You're enjoying this, aren't you? I'm loving this. One more. There's always a space for more. God! My signature move is the helicopter armbar. I ended up helicoptering, like flipping around, not knowing which way is up. He looked good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you <f> <laughs> That's why he wanted one more, just to do that, didn't he? Even on a rugby pitch, I've never been thrown about. I've been hit hard a couple of times, but never quite manipulated like that before. If you are tough enough to take it and then go through any barriers that you have in your front, that's going to be the difference between uh, a person in the average and a super athlete. I'm definitely going to apply this to my big finale match. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've learned so much already and I really think it's going to have a huge impact. The fun part, the strength part, the tough part's gone. Now it's time to focus, concentrate, visualize and be ready for the main match. So it's my uh, my game tomorrow. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm wired. I can't sleep. I just found out I'm going to be on the Kingston first team, which is their top team. Uh, I've previously been playing for Kingston second, which is the lower team. I just really want to impress Sam, I guess, and all the people I've met along the way. I'm really excited and extremely nervous, and uh, I hope I do well and uh, wish me luck. Coming up, it's match day. Can Jake impress Welsh rugby captain Sam Warburton and prove he's got what it takes to be a champion?
It was the day I've been building up to for the last five weeks. The final rugby match. I was about to play the game of my life in front of international rugby captain Sam Warburton. Before the rest of the teams arrived, Browley wanted to give me some final words of wisdom. Today, man, is the day. Now is the time that you've been trained for. Braulio reminded me of the lessons I'd learnt so far, from the focus needed in sumo, to not giving up in Tommy Gunn's gym, and the harsh conditions of the South Wales coastline. I'd learnt to respect my opponent and believe in myself, and recover from big setbacks. My fitness had been pushed to the limit, and Braulio taught me that technique will always prevail over size. And crucially, not to forget to enjoy myself. But I was about to find out if I'd done enough. I'm very excited about it, man. I can't too. wait to see it. It's very good. Same here, Oh, yeah, man. I was playing in the first team of my university for the first time, and Sam Warburton would be watching. I was really nervous. In the changing room, spirits were high, but I could hardly contain my nerves. I was trying to remember all Braulio had taught me about focusing and staying calm. I'm a bit nervous because it's like a piece of me there. You know, he's, we've been training together, we've been talking together, preparing together for this, you know. Personally, if I wasn't feeling nervous, I, I wouldn't feel right, which might sound strange. So I think you need those nerves to bring the, bring the best out of you. We win the ball, the backs, score the points for us. Yeah. 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 We were playing against Isha Rugby Club a local team who have some big players. It was going to be a tough game. There was time for our team talk. And then we were out. I could see the Welsh Rugby Union guys and my family watching, but I had to try to forget they were there and concentrate only on the game. We were playing 35 minutes each way. This was it. The game was brutal from the start. We scored first from a penalty kick and took the early lead. A scout from Isha Rugby Club was watching the game closely, looking for potential new players to recruit, which was adding to the pressure. I was fiercely attacking and going in for huge tackles and both my shoulders were feeling really strong. <laughs> but Isha's front row were too powerful for us. And we finished the first half four points behind. At half-time, Isha were on a high. Superb, okay? Everyone knew they were going to turn up and they were going to be like, oh, keys to the college, young boys, cameras rolling, flashy, flashy, boys. Cameras are rolling, boys, but I'll tell you one thing, the spotlight is on us, boys. Whilst we were getting some stern words from our coach. We're playing on the edge. We're making too many mistakes. We're being dragged into a scrap rather than playing our own game. We are making these boys look average. Jake's doing well off the back, so let's just get the ball up and let's get forward. We had 35 minutes to turn the scores around. We suffered a huge blow early on as one of our forwards broke his ankle, taking him out of the game. We had to pull together and not let the strength of the other team intimidate us. 